you know, what was interesting is that I had been thinking all along about how could I work with Africa mm -hmm. to share my technology and have an economic impact yeah. using some of the uh, things that I was working on. And um, when he came, I was actually in the middle of a speaker project, you know, stereotype speakers, but I was thinking something bigger than that for, for, for working with Africa. And when he came and said you know, what he said, I said, well, Ghana is the place to start. Hello, welcome. Thank you. So I was particularly interested in the fact that he worked on the Voyager station, which is in interstellar space. It's going out of the solar system. And um, since beans back information, I think not too long ago, was it Voyager 1 or Voyager 2 was down for a while. And they woke it up, it's beans back information from interstellar space. And interestingly, Dr. Looney was one of those who worked on, on on the Voyager space spaceship. The, the, you know, for those of you who may know, Saturn is a planet that has rings about it. And we didn't really know what was the composition of the rings, but they sent out the spaceship and then it went through the rings of Saturn. So we can now know what is in the rings of Saturn. And I think they dropped it into, into onto the, the planet itself. And they found that it was a rocky planet. Initially, people thought it was a gaseous planet, but they found that it was a rocky planet. He also worked on some part of the ship that went to, to Saturn and a few other other things. He was talking about, was it Euclidae? Don't remember the name, the plumes that come from. Yeah. And the people are wondering whether there's life on those planets as well. He also worked on those ships. So the man sitting here is a great man. He's done lots of things. And I think he showed that um, um, it's a water guns that he had also invented, very popular in the United States. I thought he would bring a couple to Ghana with him, so I would, I would buy one, but maybe the next time he comes to Ghana. But I think on this trip, particularly, he comes to with um, a water project and a contraption that is able to pluck moisture from the atmosphere and, and condense it in a way and then in condensing it to so attempts to produce electricity, novel ideas. And he's looking for partnership with some universities in Ghana. And then that was an instrumental in getting me involved. And we managed to get CCTU and UCC to collaborate to see if we can work on his ideas. Beyond that, you may know that most of the batteries we have are have electrolytes you know liquid in them and then there is another other types of batteries which are called solid state batteries um, what we for if you are not if you've been listening to news you would you have known that Ghana has now discovered lithium and lithium is used in the production of quite a lot, lot of batteries but it has a different concept production of a battery that doesn't use lithium and so we are putting together a team to work on the water concept and then also to work on the batteries as well. And I think what he wishes is for the black man to also put a step forward in the area of invention. Not just a black man anywhere, but a black man in Africa as well. And so the two universities are going to work together with them to see if we can come up with the contraption that will lack water from the atmosphere and also produce electricity in addition to coming up with a battery solid state battery um, if you listen to the budget reading they're saying that um, they're going to grant tax exemptions for uh, EV cars electrical v vehicles and they require batteries to operate they're no longer they're no longer gas powered 
And so if we can build a battery locally, it will help us to a very large extent. All right, so thank you very much for checking me out. This is Echo Simpson. I'm happy to be uh, with one of the inventors in the world. Uh, he's here currently in the central region of Ghana. And uh, today we are having a celebration. Uh, there's a beautiful event that happened right now. But in February, you will see more of that. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel and then welcome to Cape Coast. My I am, pleasure. Of course, Simpson in Cape Coast is my city. So you're welcome. My so pleasure. how are the Thank feelings you. so far coming to Ghana, you know, having uh, a, a program intended coming up with the two universities and then what is happening right now here? Well, this has been a wonderful experience. This is my second time to Ghana. The first time I came was for a Pan-African Robotics competition among high school students, and I brought a team with me from America. Um, I, uh, Nana actually came to my laboratory in Atlanta, and I didn't expect to see him. I didn't know, but he came in, and he said that you know they had selected to uh, me as a uh, king for uh, technology in Ghana. And this is what he wanted to do. And this was before COVID. Okay. So um, COVID happened and then we couldn't do any travel, anything like that. So I was disappointed. But during that discussion, I had, you know, what was interesting is that I had been thinking all along about how could I work with Africa mm -hmm. to share my technology and have an economic impact yeah. using some of the uh, things that I was working on. And um, when he came, I was actually in the middle of a speaker project, you know, stereotype speakers, but I was thinking something bigger than that for, for, for working with Africa. And when he came and said you know, what he said, I said, well, Ghana is the place to start because yeah. this is my second trip and, and you know, it would be like, it's, it's just meant to be. Yeah, it's just meant to be. And so I'm here. I've had a wonderful experience. I've spent... Um, the first part of the week, um, mm -hmm. talking with the scientists at the university, mm -hmm. both universities, um, about the technology and the project right. and what we're going to do. And this is something that will have global impact. If we're successful, this will be a technology that people all over the world will be using right. because it'll be something that addresses the environmental challenges that we face. Uh, it's a renewable energy, green energy technology that produces electricity and water. Even the United States is stressed for water. Yeah. We don't have enough water in the country. And we're concerned about the, some of the rivers starting to dry up. And even in Louisiana right now, the river levels are so low that the salt water is starting to come up, the, ri up wow. the river and starting to ruin some of the, um, the ecosystem there. And so there's a lot of, lot of concern. So this will be something that the entire world needs and yeah. will benefit the world and of course um, the economic benefits uh, will be very 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 significant yeah. but you know we've got to bring the technology to fruition mm -hmm. you know i've done the initial analysis of it yeah. it works i've come up with it as an invention mm -hmm. that's what i do is invent things <laughs> yeah, i read i read more about you online and all that <laughs> So uh, I'm excited about the relationship. Mm -hmm. Everybody's been absolutely wonderful. Great, great. So here we have Dr. Okay, Dr. Rodney Johnson. Yeah. Congratulations. What do you think Africa as a whole is ready to accept technology? You know, that's an interesting question because you know, in America, you may hear sometimes about the economic issues with uh, Mexico uh, borders on the south, mm -hmm. but you never hear about economic issues to the north with yeah. Canada. Mm -hmm. You know, people choose who they want to dra trade with and who they want to do business with, just mm -hmm. like I chose to come here. So who benefits from technology and who benefits from economic opportunity is mm -hmm. a matter of who you choose to work with. Yeah. So choosing to work with people who look like me is a choice I get to make. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been, the, for good or bad, that's been the way of the world yeah. for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, for various reasons, humanity seems to segregate itself in the mm -hmm. groups, tribes, or whatever you want to, however you want to name them. Yeah. 
but you know there are people who thrive on coming together and for mutual benefits and to be helpful for each other and then there are other people who thrive on pushing people apart and creating little mm -hmm. them for themselves mm -hmm. and trying to shut everybody else out so i guess it takes all of that in nature for humanity to move forward so president obama used to talk about how you know humanity will move forward every now and then we take a step back but the overall movement is forward and so there are great benefits slavery was a terrible thing but um now hopefully we're coming full circle and we'll have some positive benefits that come out of that as we in america reach back to try and um, help lift up our homeland all right i wish you i, I wish you well here in ghana uh, um, i know there are a lot more to see and a lot more to do so as and when it is necessary we'll come up again and put an update there for people to know that yes africans can come together and work things out. Right. All right thank Absolutely. You. Thank you so much. Right. I enjoyed it. My pleasure. Peace.